Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. And keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Friday, April 5th. We're gonna take a look at ACB today. So ACB has been on a tear recently from 284 up to 888, working through a bunch of our levels, which have held up really well in my estimation. You see this purple level here, which is the nearest in level to the 663 close. Um, that's the gap that it had back here. So obviously it has now filled that gap and has retraced back through it. So we'll see if that gap area is able to hold. That 615 does represent sort of the gap close or the gap entry, depending on <laughs> what, what direction you're coming from. So that could also play a factor as a support level as well. Now if it loses both 651 and 615, we have a 531 level down here. We don't have anything in between for now. We can put something there just because that's a huge percentage shift to not have any levels. So we'll throw one here at 567. And uh, you know, if it does get down there, like I say, we'll see how 567 holds up. Pretty thin price action at that level, but uh, you know, maybe it will sort of come through. Um, so like I said, 531 and then 490, 440, so on and so forth. Now, if it is able to stabilize or even just sort of like return to its run, then $7, 760, 813, and 871 to the upside. I did put sort of a, a you know, goal post up here, um, a marker, if you will, at 1040. Um, there's certainly some other levels in between, but I figured we'd wait until it gets a little tighter in uh, to this range. You know, maybe around 914 or so might might make sense, but I want to take another look at it, you know, if and when it gets up into the eights to see where we want to place something in the $9 uh, range. Now, on the think or swim side of things, we see, you know, it obviously is wildly catalyst driven and has propensity to make huge moves. We see another one here, but you know, it retraced all of those and more. So, you know, if you're an ACB bull, hopefully that's not going to repeat itself here, but we'll see, um, you know, as it is right now, sort of colliding with the channel, whenever these stocks leave the channel and it, on this setup, we always look to see what they do when they re-engage with the channel. For now, it's looking as though it wants to treat the upper bound of the channel as support. Now, if that's the case, that can sometimes mean that there's more momentum that needs to be exhausted in the direction in which the stock is moving, in this case, to the upside, before it's going to be able to pull back into the channel. So let's see if that support on the upper bound of the channel continues to hold up or not. Even with this sort of two-day uh, drawdown from the highs, we do still see the histogram picking up bullish momentum on the TTM squeeze indicator. So we'll see what factor, if any, that plays as well. Now, if it does get into the channel, it could still use the green wave cloud as support, which would again be potentially indicative of more momentum that needs to be exhausted. Um, Ultimately, eventually we look for it to come test the mid-range. Right now, that's the bright blue line here. That's at 470. Um, this does shift every time price action gets put in, so it won't be there probably by the time that it makes contact. But um, you know, to the extent to which it hovers above there or continues to push higher, it'll drag this channel up. So that mid-range will get higher and higher and higher. So if it does get itself into the channel, that's when we really want to look and see what it does when it reconnects with the mid-range. You can see it here. And this push that we were just briefly talking about, again, there it looked as though it was going to hold support on the upper bound of the channel, and it did make another push. Now, it didn't swing higher than the swing high that brought it there, but it still had additional bullish momentum to exhaust before it was able or before it was going to pull back into the channel. So this is sort of what I'm talking about. Use this as support, another push. And then when it reconnected, it tried to hold support again, but it drew into the channel and confirmed resistance on the upper bound of the channel. And then the very next candle makes contact or very near contact to the mid range. And that's where you see the battle to maintain support at the mid range. It lost that battle and uh, flipped it to support. And then, like I said, you, you had sort of a longer term trickle down after that. So just to sort of like give an example of what we look for, you know, on these finding support 
at or above the channel, and then you know what we'll look for when it re-engages with the mid-range of the channel itself. All right, folks, I hope that you've had a nice trading week and that you enjoy your weekend. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.